Hi there guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to run through how to do a very quick HDR photo merge in Photoshop. I'm going to talk a bit first about the, the photos I've taken and why you'd want to use this technique. So basically there are some shots you can get with your camera um, where the contrast is just going to be really too high to get it all in one shot. So you have to do what's called a bracketed shot. So basically this means you're taking three or more shots with your camera that you can then merge into one photograph and in Photoshop it will pull out the most balanced parts of each of those exposures. So here you can see I've got three images, one which has the normal exposure, um, but you can see in this picture we've lost the detail, the trees and some of the mountain. And then in this other underexposed shot, we have lost all the detail on the mountain, the trees, it's very contrasty, very silhouette but we've got some nice detail from the clouds and the skies, which we don't have in this first image on the left-hand side. And then we have an overexposed shot that really it brings out the highlights of the trees okay and this is what Photoshop can combine to make into one photograph and you can see that on my lens um, if we have a look here I've used a very small aperture so a big number um, on my aperture means very small hull um, so that I'm getting a lot in focus from the foreground to the background so I don't have any shallow depth of field so I'm getting a nice clear exposure right throughout the image and that makes the, the photo merge a lot easier to do I'm working on a tripod which is really essential for this particular kind of merging because then otherwise you're going to get a lot of shake in the image as the as Photoshop tries to merge the images together. And then also the last thing we see here is the speed of the shutter as it's opened. So we have a 1 over 180, so 1 180th of a second exposure, 1 over 750 exposure and 1 over 45. So the shutter speed is basically what's varying here in terms of making sure you get those variations in exposure. So let's now jump into Photoshop where we'll have a look at how we can merge these together and some of the options that we have when we're working in Merge to HDR. Okay, so we have these three images open in three tabs here. Um, and there are a couple of different ways of bringing the images into Merge to HDR. One is to have the files open, which I normally prefer. And the other is to bring them in when you actually are adding files in Merge to HDR. So let's go to File, and it's under the Automate menu. And we're merging to HDR Pro here, okay? So we'll click on this and you can see we have two options for adding files. So we can add files by browsing to a folder or we can add open files. So we're gonna add all the open files. So we have these three images, okay? And it's gonna to attempt to automatically align the source images. So that means that if you are doing your images handheld, then Photoshop will try to align them. Okay, so it is possible to do a handheld image, but not recommended for, for this particular technique. So once we click OK, Photoshop will align those images, put them together, and then it will give you the merged HDR Pro window, which allows you to adjust the exposure of your image and pull out the highlights and the shadows in that image and kind of have a bit more control over them. Okay. So if we look to the, the image itself here, you can see I've got an image now that has the best of the sky, uh, the foreground detail here in the trees, and then also uh, the, the shadows in the mountain as well. So we're getting all that detail from the image and we can adjust and control that here with these options on the right hand side, okay? So basically, we'll have a look at the, the options that I tend to use most of all. And those are the advanced options down here where really I'm controlling the amount of adjustment that I'm giving to the highlights and the shadows to try and get this image into a format that I want. Now I tend to stick close to the automatic options, but you can see here I can pull up the shadows a little more or drop them back down to kind of get some more contrast into them. And it's controlling very specific kind of different parts of the image as I work with these. I can also adjust the vibrance so I can pull more color um, into the image, okay, and work with the saturation, which is similar to, to vibrance. Vibrance and saturation do similar things but um, in a slightly uh, different way whereas saturation is trying to push the saturation of the whole image vibrance is trying to work a little bit more smartly to get the the color to work with the image as well okay and then we have one of my favorite parts of this window in the advanced section which is the curve which allows us to really control kind of where we have our image sit okay and we can add one or more points on here to really get some nice control over where we're pushing 
the areas of contrast up or down in our image. So you can see here you have a real nice level of control over which parts of the image you're brightening up and darkening as you work on the image so you can get all the detail from all the different parts of that image. And once you've done this, once you've finished with your advanced and curve settings, worked on the gamma and the overall exposure, okay, then you can click OK here on the bottom right and Photoshop will then merge your image together. Okay, so you can see this is the, the finished image that we have here and you can see that it's pulled together the best parts of all of these images. Now sometimes I do find that with the merge to HDR Pro it can be pushing some parts of the image a little bit too much. So what you can also do because we've worked on a tripod is if we just close these two images Okay, so one other thing we can do once we've just closed those other two files is save our HDR image and we'll just save it as a PSD. And then if we go to File, Automate and Photo Merge, we can add those two open files, align them together using the automatic alignment. Okay, and you can see what's happened now is these two images have been aligned. Okay, so and we have a mask on the topmost image. Okay, so it's actually masking out all that detail from the, the original image. So now what we can look to do is actually work with this mask layer and just flip to the foreground the white here and we can begin to brush in some of that original colour of the white and the mountains as well. Okay, and you can see the merge to HDR sometimes overcooks it a little bit with uh, its correction. And so here we can kind of pull it back a little bit. And I'm masking very quickly here, pulling this back in very quickly. But you can see we then get the sky in the top of the image and the detail on the road, but we brought back in some of the green of the trees um, that we originally had. Now, as with anything in Photoshop, we can work on this and keep uh, tweaking it and fine tuning it. We can work on the the edge here so that we get a nice edge rather than this glow okay but if we want to just kind of pull this in a little bit we can also work on the opacity of that layer just to kind of pull back in some of that original image or even change the blend mode so that we're just tweaking the color rather than uh, everything else in the image so we can incorporate a variety of, of options of kind of blending our images when we're merging to HDR Pro but then also bring in other techniques as well such as aligning and pulling back in the other images so work on a tripod take several exposures and then you can really work on those uh, beautiful mountain shots that you've taken to kind of pull in all the detail that you have with these kind of static uh, subjects.